following the implantation of the blastocyst into the endometrium of the uterus, another process known as gastrulation begins. And gastrulation is an early embryological process in which the three distinct germ layers are formed. And these germ layers include the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. Now, as we'll see in just a moment, the cells of each one of these germ layers eventually give rise to specific organs and structures and systems found within the adult human individual. So let's begin by briefly discussing which structures and which organs and systems are formed by each one of these three germ layers. And let's begin with the ectoderm. Now the ectoderm is the outer layer, it's the external layer of that developing embryo as we'll see in just a moment. And that ectoderm gives rise to the integumentary system of the human body. And that includes the outer portion of the skin, the ears, the nails, and the hair. Now because of an invagination process, as we'll see in just a moment, a portion of that ectoderm makes its way into that developing embryo and this forms the nervous system of the human body and that includes the brain and the spinal cord and also includes all the nerve cells that are part of the peripheral nervous system. We also form the pituitary gland that is found beneath that hypothalamus in the brain. Now let's move on to the middle layer, the, actually not the middle layer, let's discuss the internal layer. So this is the innermost layer found in that developing organism, in that developing embryo, and this is called the endoderm. Now the endoderm layer gives rise to the epithelial layer of the lungs, our digestive system, the pancreas, the bladder, the liver, and it also forms the thyroid and the parathyroid gland as well as the thymus. And finally, what about the mesoderm? Well, the mesoderm is the middle layer of the developing embryo. It's found between these two layers. And so it makes sense that the mesoderm basically creates everything between the skin as well as our digestive epithelium. So we have things like the musculoskeletal system, so that includes the bone and the cartilage as well as the three types of muscles. We have the cardiac muscle, we have the smooth muscle, and we have the skeletal muscle. Now because we form the cardiac muscle, that means we also form the cardiovascular system system of the body and that includes the heart as well as the blood vessels. We also form the excretory system as well as the reproductive system so that includes the gonads of the female, the ovaries, as well as the gonads of the male, the testes. So these are the three different layers that are formed during the process of gastrulation. The question is, how does gastrulation actually take place? So let's take a look at the following six diagrams that ultimately describe the process of gastrulation, the formation of the three distinct germ layers. So let's begin with diagram one, which describes the process of implantation. When that blastocyst, the embryo, actually develop, actually implants itself onto the endometrium, the lining of the uterus. So this is the endometrium and this is the blastocyst. So recall that the blastocyst consists of a region known as the trophoblast and these are the purple cells, the dark purple cells found as shown. We have the light purple cells that form the inner cell mass and this entire inner cavity that contains a fluid that provides nutrition to these developing cells is known as the blastocele. Now the inner cell mass, the cells shown in light purple, eventually form these three distinct germ layers, while the cells of the trophoblast eventually give rise to the chorion as well as to the placenta. And remember the placenta is the structure that provides a source of nutrition and oxygen from the mother and to that developing organism, that developing fetus. Now let's suppose we move from diagram one to diagram two. What happens in between these two diagrams? Well basically the cells of the trophoblast begin secreting and releasing digestive enzymes. 
and these digestive enzymes degenerate this section of the endometrium and that allows the entire blastocyst to make its way entirely into the endometrium and that hole is eventually sealed off by blood clots as well as uh, as well as by developing epithelial cells so in diagram 2 the entire embryo is found inside that endometrium and also notice that the cells of the inner cell mass differentiate differentiate into two different types of cells. We have the green cells that make up the hypoblast and we have these blue cells that make up the epiblast. Now, the hypoblast cells eventually give rise to the endoderm, while the epiblast eventually gives rise to the ectoderm. And as we'll see in just a moment, the mesoderm develops in between as a result of a process called invagination when we form that primitive streak, as we'll see in just a moment. Now, when we go from diagram 2 to diagram 3, what happens is the upper portion of the hypoblast and the upper portion of the epiblast eventually migrates upward towards this pole. And we basically form the following diagram. So, notice this entire green portion eventually develops into the umbilical vessel. Now, in non-humans, it's called the yolk sac. And the umbilical vessel, uh, vesicle eventually becomes part of the umbilical cord system. And we also form this cavity that is created by the epiblast cells. And this is known as the amniotic cavity. And this is where that organism, the fetus, will actually be found, as we'll see in just a moment. Moment. Now, we also have this extension of the trophoblast, this purple section that will develop into the chorion and ultimately into the placenta. Now, when we go from diagram 3 to diagram 4, something important takes place. We form something called the mesoderm. So that's the middle layer of that developing embryo. And these are the red cells as shown in this diagram. Now, what happens is if we zoom in on this section, we get the following diagram. And what happens is we have this invagination process where the blue layer basically invaginates and it forms the primitive streak. And along the primitive streak, which is basically this axis where invagination takes place, these blue cells essentially invaginate and move inwards. And as they move inwards, these blue cells develop into the red cells that make up the mesoderm. And as this pushing process takes place, all these red cells eventually are pushed around this entire structure. So if we look at this diagram, what happens when we go from diagram 4 to diagram 5 is there is an inward push that goes into this direction and that pushes all these red cells around the following diagram. And so all these red cells eventually make their way uh, around the green structure around the blue structure and ultimately around the entire trophoblast, the purple section of this diagram. And so when we go from diagram four to diagram five, this is what we produce. So this invagination process along the primitive streak, the movement of the ectoderm cells into the red section, the formation of these red cells eventually pushes all these red cells and the mesodermal layer around the green structure, the blue structure, and around this entire purple structure to form the following diagram. So this is basically our umbilical vesicle and this is basically the amniotic cavity where that fetus will be found. Now, what happens when we go from five to six is this section basically moves inward. So it pushes this way and eventually we form an embryo that looks something like this. And notice that this entire structure here is that developing embryo. It's that developing fetus. So the red portion is the actual embryo along with this green portion and the blue portion. The red portion is basically that middle layer. It's that mesoderm. And the mesoderm 
will basically form the, mus uh, the musculoskeletal system, the cardiovascular system, the excretory system, the reproductive system, everything found in between the green layer and that blue layer. Now the blue layer is found on the outside, it's the external layer, and it will develop that skin layer, as well as the ears, the nails, and the hair. And not only that, because this blue layer, notice it will eventually move move inside, it also forms the nervous system, the brain, as well as our spinal cord. And this green layer, which is found on the inside, will form our digestive system. It will form the epithelial layer of our digestive system, as well as the lungs, the liver, the pancreas, and the bladder. Now, this structure develops into the umbilical vesicle. This entire structure is the chorionic cavity, and this outside portion is the chorion. This extension is what becomes our placenta. This, uh, uh, this structure here that connects the placenta, the chorion, to the growing embryo is the embryonic stock, and this will eventually develop into the embryonic tube, that embryonic um, section, the embryonic cord that connects that placenta to that developing fetus. And this is the amniotic cavity that contains, that houses, that growing fetus. So this is the process that we call gastrulation. It, it is basically an early phase of embryological development in which following implantation, the three germ layers, the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm begin to form and ultimately form the different types of structures, organs, and systems that are found inside the human body.